Welcome to Podtendo's Legend of Zelda Retrospective. We are going to be primarily looking at Majora's Mask during these next few shows. We are going to be doing a deep dive into thematical elements, gameplay, and the design of this game. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Podtendo's Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask Retrospective. We are in part three, and as the title of this episode says... Saving the day, as usual. Welcome, oh, no, oh, oh no, we're here. Uh, we're going to deep dive into thematical elements, gameplay design, and characters that helped create one of the most challenging narratives in any Zelda game. We are going to spoil the adventure, so if you haven't experienced it for yourself, go play it. Or if it's just been a while, put it down, go play it, it's a good time. We're going to be doing this over the course of the year. There's still a couple parts still coming out. Uh, in our second episode, we looked at what the development details were. We looked at the first two official dungeons and talked too much about the Magic Bean Salesman. Today we're going to look at the controls and we're going to get back into the game. I don't know why it's in quotation marks. And we're going to talk about the final two dungeons. Heck of a lot of side content to cover, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, we got a lot to cover. It's a pretty dense game. There's definitely a lot to do if you uh, want to get lost in it. No. Oh. 100% and very, very in depth. Uh, lots of little side quests you can do. Uh, in the amount of time that we've spent, you could, like, yeah, argu arguably not not be as far as we are, right? Or be further because maybe we did too much. So, so, Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. That was a really. I'm Mick. That's Tyson. Oh my goodness. What a terrible. I really set a wall, guys, when I'm recording this. This, like, replaying the three days is awful. Link never sleeps. I'm feeling it now. So, it's getting to me. Yep. Yep. And I think. Uh... I think, you know, every time he goes back, he might just, like, lose a little bit of himself. I don't know. That's terrible. I'm glad that wasn't a part of this game where you just, like, slowly start, like, it's a health container every time you... Imagine if that was the game. Horrible. Like, there was lots of there was lots of heart containers to get. Like, there was more than enough. And every time you went back, you lost a heart container. So you could actually, like, permadeath or, like, get down to, like, one heart. And then yeah. be at that point where you're, like, going to die because you just don't have enough. That would be just terrible. And you just like yeah. your your inputs to your like your sword slowly get like slow down too. Yeah, it's, I mean it's interesting, but I'm glad they didn't do that. So, anyways, The Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask. I was developed by Nintendo. Three point six three million sales. Uh, release date was October twenty six, two thousand. How long to beat has this game at twenty and a half hours? Where to play? You play it on N sixty four, three DS remake, GameCube, and Wii. The controls of this game. So the controls are just all over the place. At their core, they are exactly the same as the Ocarina of Time. It's pretty exciting. However, there are masks that completely change what you can do. You can have skip on water, hover through the air, roll around, run really fast, swim at the speed of a fish, or become a bomb. Uh, this may be the greatest arsenal of moves that Link can do in any Zelda game. And if you could climb, he, no other Link, would be able to handle him. Yeah. Then yeah. no other Link would be able to hold a candle to him. There, there you go. go. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's kind of true. And uh, but there might be there might be something that gives him a pretty strong edge that we might discover later on in this walkthrough. Yeah. 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 Very, 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 very true. Okay. Cool. So getting back into it. I understand what I was trying to say. Remember when I was struggling when when we got back into this game? Quotation marks. So uh, definitely one of those things where I played this game for a bit, uh, then I stopped, uh, and then it was college. So we're ta like, talking two thousand uh, five, six year span where I just didn't play this game. Was not a part of my life. I picked it up again, uh, and actually watching early YouTube let's plays really started fueling my fire. Uh, shortly afterwards, I purchased it on the Wii Virtual Console. Never looked back. I played through it uh, maybe twice before I was 21. And then since that point, I've played through it about 12 times. So this game has aged very, very well. So Tice, do you have any memories when you were kind of playing it and then you stopped playing it at any point? Yeah, I think I never beat this game. Um, I think I got to probably the Zora area and I just kind of got away from me did other things and you know probably watched you beat it and was like nah, no no now i know how it ends so yeah i'm gonna play something else and that was that was a lot of games when i was growing up that i just like would watch you beat it and be like well i know how it ends so now i can play this other game um like analog let's plays basically basically like in-person let's plays um 
And yeah, so I, I put this down, didn't really play it. Um, when the 3DS remake came out, um, that was a big thing. Like, oh, we can we can we can finally play this game because I missed the whole Master Quest thing. I didn't know, didn't didn't pre-order a GameCube like a, like a smart person should have, and got the Master Quest for free because that was that was like I, I had a couple friends in high school that like or in, and in, even in university that had that copy, and I was like, that was the holy grail. Like, I had a GameCube, but I didn't have that. I had a, like a bunch of, of every other game, but like that was missing from my GameCube collection for the longest time. So it's like just bittersweet. So when this game came out, it was nice to kind of have the opportunity to know I could play it. And then the shenanigans with the limited uh, release of 3DS, I think kind of overshadowed the actual release of this game because it's, it's really good. Like this game essentially established, I want to say the side quest, like, template for 99 percent of rpgs nowadays like half of it's like run there talk to this person and run and go do that and it's like it's these are all just basically majority mass started this thing so i definitely missed out yeah yeah i makes sense and sorry you said that there was there wasn't that many sales on the 3ds like there was limited no no i I think just the news of the Uh, 3ds uh specific like actual console i remember being hyped about about it and then going and getting a copy of Majora's Mask on the 3DS when it came out and being like awesome and like they had a ton of the store and it was yeah maybe just poor marketing yeah I just think that a lot of people wanted to buy it but they also wanted the console that came with it because it had like the actual I think it was gold and had the Majora's Mask uh, mask on it like it was really cool looking and I I know a couple of people that were like that put off buying it initially because they were trying to track down the console Okay, interesting. So, yeah, hmm. that was that was just the one thing I, I remember is people people really wanted to get the limited edition console, couldn't find it, mm, yeah, and that was yeah. a that was a big hullabaloo. Gotcha. All right, so about the still so now that's it. We don't throw anything else. Apparently, we're uh, back into the game. So yay! So the story so far with Ocarina in hand, the boy Link traveled in the southern swamp, saved the witch, played Metal Gear Solid, beat the Woodfall Temple before heading north to the mountains. There we followed an owl, then a Goron ghost, took a hot bath, became a Goron, painfully learned a song, beat the Snowhead Temple before finally upgrading our sword. It's on to the level notes, so we're back at the grind. So now what? Uh, you would think that with the power of the Goron and the powder keg in our possession, we would be unstoppable. Sadly, no. The next area is blocked with a little gate and that we have to jump over. So you know what that means? We need to get a horse, apparently. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and finally, you know, that, that horse we lost at the start of the game. Mm-hmm. Finally, we were like, you know, might want to get that back eventually, eh? Yeah. It so, took uh, a little bit. So if you know a trick, you can actually just go to the bomb shop and there's a Goron there that will sell you a powder keg. It's like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, very affordable. You've got it. We can then go south to the Milk Road and blast open a giant boulder. And this gives us access to Romani Ranch. Here we find a Pona and a ranch girl teaches us a Pona song. If you were a monster, you could just go to the Great Bay Coast area. Tyson, are you a monster? Uh, no, I, uh, I, I help these, these nice people out because they, they seem familiar. Yeah, they something, do seem familiar. very, uh, familiar about these people and I, I like that they know Epona's song. Yeah. See, I'm a monster. I forgot all, I forgot all yeah. about Epona. Oh, and like time, it's, oh, I don't remember any, he doesn't remember anything. Nothing. Sun yeah. song, song, song of time, like, come on, man. Stupid. You know, it's, your, it's your best friend's song. Yeah. I'm not. I'm a monster, but I also help them out. So we're going to listen to the girl's request uh, that teaches a song and meet her at the barn at 2 p.m. So we can fight off some aliens until morning. Uh, we would then need to return to the farm on the second night at 2 or something to take the older sister to town. We have to fight off some banditos and we get the milk bar mask. All right. So there is a lot to skip here, uh, but in the gameplay and the oddness of the whole situation is worth playing through. This is the best archery section in any 3D Zelda game, except for Link's crossbow training. Yeah, which was a dedicated game that had to tie us over. But yeah, this... Okay, I didn't think the milk bar mask was going to be... It's kind of underwhelming. Like, I saved these people from aliens, and this is all I get? That kind of... It's not, not that special. Yeah, it comes into play, and it's very handy later on. 
Oh, we'll just explain what it does. So Milk Bar huh. Mask gives you access to the Milk Bar, and what can you buy there? You can buy the, was it the, the very expensive milk? And so you, 200 rubies, and it's like Chateau Romani? Yeah, Chateau Romani. Um, and it gives you unlimited magic for the entire three days. Yes, so it opens at midnight. So you'd have to skip to the first day, midnight yeah. the first day. But then you get, oh, what was that? Minus 12, 60 hours of unlimited magic? Yeah. Worth it. Very worth it. Especially because if you're like, uh, I don't know, let's say you have some magic arrows, some, you know, magic lens of truth, Maybe magic you're masks. Maybe swimming and you use magic or rolling around you need magic. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. 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 All right. Cool. So now that we have our horse, though, so we can head to the Great Bay Coast area. So opponent can jump over the gates. Uh, we can save a dying Zora, get a mask, and are requested to return some golden seahorse to his mate and get a picture of a pirate. So while at the Grudo Fortress, we can play through the mini dungeon. We can get a stone mask, hookshot, and collect four Zora eggs. We can drop off the eggs at the laboratory, show the picture to the pervert, take the seahorse to Pinnacle Rock, and fight some eels to get three more eggs. When all seven eggs are returned, they hatch and teach us a song that will awaken a great turtle and give us access to the next temple. Yeah, pretty cool little side tangent. It's like a little, like a little mini dungeon mixed with some Metal Gear Solid and some, some egg collecting and... Uh, a creepy pervert sighting. So, yep. good times. Yeah, this area, I don't like it. The aesthetics, are awful. Like, I like white sand beaches and blue oceans and just warm air. And this almost seems like kind of weird and muggy. And the music creates just such a, like, a weird tone. It bugs me, right? Like, it's just so unsettling. And it just seems gross. And, like, there's monsters and guck in the water. And I'm not a fan, but I kind of like it because it makes me feel so unsettled. Because you're supposed to feel unnerved and unsettled and not comfortable in this game, right? So they do an excellent job of that, but I don't like that. I also don't like this because you need four bottles to beat the Gerudo Temple with only one trip. Well, guess what you probably don't have at this point? Yeah, side quest time. And, like, you need to know that. So, like, playing through, I think even in this one, I only had three. And then you get there and you're like, oh, it's so annoying. So you have to collect three and then leave, and then come back, and they don't make a fast travel point. <sighs> Sucks. Yeah, it gets old. It yeah. does get old fast. And I think that any time you, you have to use the bottle to collect X amount mm -hmm. of something, dumb. This, yeah. this, it's the same dumb um, iced cavern in Ocarina of Time where I got to collect half a full bottle's worth of my stupid blue fire so you can melt people it's just dumb it's a dumb yeah. thing i don't like having limited resources that i have to only get at specific things it's it's time consuming and i don't like it it's not good it's not good but some cool no not to just be all negative here we have some cool series shout outs so we get pinnacle rock which is different from spectacle rock but pinnacle rock it's these two big rock spires that stick out of the water i think they're kind of a reference to spectacle rock which has actually been in every single zelda game uh, throughout so kind of a cool callback we see a, a rock become a turtle or turtle rock eh? Eh? Mm -hmm. and we get the new wave bossa note which reanimates an object and i think it's a callback to one of the songs from a Link's awakening that like reanimates the the, the the little chicken guy that floats around or like the flying rooster so i kind of think that's like weird it's like i thought there was something about bossa nova music or something in Link's awakening so some cool callbacks to the rest of the series in this area yeah, very cool. And um, everybody knows that turtle that's played Smash Brothers because, I mean, mm -hmm. who doesn't hate that level? Yeah, that, this, again, of all the areas, not very pretty. Like, kind of a clock down, I don't know, something, whatever. Uh, it's, a, it's, the, like a, it's like a steampunk, almost like bay. Yeah. But it's like, it's like almost like you feel like dirty. Like, you wouldn't want to swim in that water. No, and like those weird, we didn't even talk about the beavers. So you can play these beaver game, like after mm. you get the hook shot. You can go get your probably your fourth bottle, but you've already got the hook shot, so it's kind of out of the way. Anyways, and they're like weird and creepy, and they got, I don't know, it's just, the aesthetics is strange. On to the Great Bay Temple, though. So, now for the best 3D Zelda dungeon. It's a bold statement. So we turn on a water wheel, travel clockwise, uh, and I don't remember if the water wheel is turning left or right, so we'll just go with clockwise. Uh, on the upper path, you'll find a key 
We then travel on the lower path to get access to a mini boss, get some ice arrows, backtrack to the upper path, and get the master key. We are now free to turn on the green pumps, follow the water back to the water wheel room, change the flow of the water, and repeat the explore the upper path and then lower path process as before. If you don't miss anything, pretty much you're done and you can head right to the boss room. The boss here is Georg. He's a giant mechanical fish. You shoot him with arrows, and then he lowers a platform. And in the 3DS version, you have to battle him as a Zora. Yeah, I think the only tricky part that people might have with this is if they don't go out of their way to get the Romani, like uh, yeah. Chateau Romani. Like, if you, because unfortunately in the N64 version, you can swim pretty fast just yeah. normally. But in this, you have like a slower speed. And then to get that normal one from the N64, you kind of have to use magic. But if you just take magic out of the equation, you just can, it's like the N64 version. That's it. Yeah, no, definitely one of those things you have to kind of abuse to enjoy this game. Uh, the dungeon, absolutely just great. I know we've been kind of harping on game design a little bit since Ocarina of Time. They nailed it. The use of 3D space here is great. They make you explore multiple levels underwater without that awkward change of water. And if you just follow the flow of the pipes, it actually shows you where you need to go, right? There is no major backtracking. There's no, what do I do? You can literally see, hey, there's water up, up to this pump. You turn it, follow the water to the next pump. It teaches you the whole level. It, awesome. It's great. And it's one of those things uh, I was, I, I, I don't like this area before. Like, I don't really enjoy it. For some reason, uh, and in my mind, it's not great. Playing through it in this one, I really was able to look back and just like see, oh, this is what they're doing. This is how they want me to play the game, right? This is how they've designed it. Excellent work. Good job. I had a good time. Yeah. Boss is think... eh. Boss is questionable, but like yeah. the dungeon overall is excellent. Definitely the the, the planning and the layout um, or the flow through of it is just, it is very, not not linear, but it's very like, intuitive mm -hmm. so you you kind of just can solve each puzzle room sequentially and there's no like like i think the worst example is lord jabu jabu is because i just feel like i'm always just disoriented and yeah. there's never like an up down left or right there's like to me it's like back back three rooms over there take platform up up floor and i end up having to think of rooms and like floors and just specific platforms and like doors as opposed to just the flow of how our room should open and close. So. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, if again, if you're not collecting all the fairies, these games are really simple. It's just, the, the fairies as an incentive is awesome, because the fairies are like, explore everything! Here's a reward, right? Like, they're almost one of the best mechanics in Zelda that never really return, right? Whereas, you could just play this level without collecting fairies, and who cares? And go, and you'd be done, Right. Oh, yeah. And I think that there's going to be those people that, like, you know, if you get irritated and you just don't want to, like, go through the hassle of getting it, it's like, don't. Yeah. Just play through the the thing, get your get the weapon, get, yeah, the beat the boss, is, and continue. It's not that difficult. Like, you could beat it without it. So, it, it, it's just... Oh, 100%. Th this game, absolutely, just, like, class act, so well done. This is Zelda... 3D Zelda almost at its finest. It's the second time into the freaking adventure, right? Like, kind of almost downhill from here. So, overworld cleanup. So, before we kind of reset time, because eh, it does take you a little while to do all those things, uh, you should have your 15 fairies. You get double defense, which basically extends your heart container. So, you have 10, you got 20. Done. Uh, you can use your hookshot to race the beavers. We can uh, ensure that you have finished the Romani Ranch side quest. And... You should be all set. You might also need to win the Gorman's race to get a mask that gets you access to Icana Canyon. Yeah, yeah. A bit of like side uh, side questing and cleanup. But once you're kind of all set and you finish the... If you did all that before the Great Bay Temple, you're pretty mm -hmm. well set to like rock and roll into the uh, Icana Canyon, which is very interesting. Like I'm... I don't remember this level, this game being, maybe because I didn't beat it as a kid, but I don't remember like all the, these, it feels longer than it, than it is because mm -hmm. there's, there's so many extra little things that you need to go do. Like the whole Gerudo in, invading, it's kind of its own little mini dungeon and then you get a whole dungeon and it's like, so I, I just feel like there's like, there's so much jam packed in this and it doesn't feel like you're constantly having to backtrack or you're just trying to just do the next thing there's always something new to explore and i feel like everywhere you're 
uh, looking in in the world map. There's always kind of something new that you like. I can't wait to turn around that next corner because there's going to be something that I I don't know and it's going to be different than that last thing I just did. So well, and it's yeah, like you said, it, I mean they kind of do have other dungeons. There's not dungeons, right? So like the Southern Swamp and the Deku Palace, those parts are kind of a dungeon. They just don't have the traditional keys and rooms and bosses. And then you've got your wind. Then you've got the whatever called wind or woodfall temple, right? So there's two. And then same idea with Goron Village. It's the same idea. It's kind of like a puzzle. You have to interact with different elements. And then you got uh, Snowhead, right? So you're up to four, uh, Pirate Fortress, Great Base. We're up to six. And then you almost get three in this next area, right? Kind of just based yeah. on the way they are. So it is kind of one of those things where they have seven ish. 10, almost 10 dungeons, just counting on my fingers, which is the same they had in mid, uh, Ocarina of Time. You just didn't really do much in the overworld in those games, so. Yeah, exactly. And this, this instead of doing, like, a side quest to, like, oh, get the, get this item to unlock this thing, it's like, yeah, you're going to get this item, but go explore this area and yeah. come back after you explore that area. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. There's a new, new area, new thing to do. It's not just, like, go po hunting. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just, like do something repetitive, collect X amount of whatever. It's usually like, go explore this and you'll be rewarded. Again, they did They did a nice, nice job. But we're on to the final area of this game. Even though, again, it's only four. There's, there's a lot of little stuff going on. I can a canyon. So I would hear Ed here on the first day, follow the path to the left to the graveyard. Here we can awaken a giant skeleton. We are rewarded with the captain's hat, which allows us to get access to graves that skeleton guards are guarding. On the first night, there's a grave that leads to an iron knuckles, and this gives us the song of storm. Now we can make our way up the canyon. We can use ice arrows to make some platforms, play the song of storms for sharp, uh, which then raises the river, uh, pulls music into the iconic canyon from this big music box house, and kind of settles the dead for now. We can sneak into said music box house and save the Gibdo dad. Yeah, that this little girl just locked him in the closet. And then yeah. um, after you save him, he's like, wait, what happened? She's like, oh, nothing. Yeah, it's, it's like, kind of fucked up. Did, did he kill people? Like, yeah. how did... How did how did like Gibdos are not nice things? Well, I think he has some level of humanity because he does seem like he comes out, but he's more just disoriented, and she's able to control him. Because I don't know if you tried, but I might have attacked him, and then you get thrown out of the house. So, mm-hmm. no, I didn't. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm again. I said earlier, I'm a monster. I attacked the poor Gibdo man, <laughs> and then the next time I went in and saved him, and I was like, yay! So let's say so. There's a lot to unpack here. So the side quests do seem to grow and grow further and further as we head into this game uh this area seems the most unique it takes a dark element from ocarina and builds a fun fleshed out area um uh, and i would like to have used more of the songs of awakening uh i like that you have to use the song of awakening to start the f- fight with the big skeleton guy i wish they included other songs more so make puzzles and side quests that need you to awaken or put to sleep or reanimate objects around the world okay cool yeah, yeah. I think there's a fair amount of that, but that's there's a certain puzzle section coming up that that I'm not a fan of. Oh, you don't want to just play songs all the time? All right, that's weird. So now we have the Gibdo mask. We can head into the bottom of the well. Note, you do need the red potion and magic beans, which are not in this area. You have to go out your way and get them before you can actually start a trading game with Gibdos. So after some dumb trades, fighting a big ghost... We get the mirror shield and we can head to Icona Fortress. Inside, we head to the left first, solve some puzzles, and once we're on the roof, we can move a block. Now you can explore the right side and you have to use a powder keg to open up another hold, uh, another hole in the roof. Remember that powder keg that we haven't used in this entire day and we only used that one other time? You probably yep. had one in your inventory before you got into the roof of this castle, right? A hundred percent. You're not going to have to backtrack because you completely forgot that stuff. And you never ever, and you always forget, and you're like, what the heck? Why can't I just ground pound with the Goron? It's, it's already broken. It's yep. stupid. Anyways, so this gives us access to the King's Chambers. Here we have to fight three skeletons, and we can attack, and then we have to kind of melt with sunlight. We get told, or we get taught the elog- Elegy of Emptiness, which leaves a hollow copy of us behind, before we can climb the stone tower and enter the dungeon. And that was one sentence. But that last sentence, man, is a pain in the ass cool thing about the two knights in the king fight 
is the two knights you can put on certain masks and they'll interact with them. So you can put the the what's the marching mask where you play the little like oh the Bremen mask the Bremen mask you put that really? on and they they march behind you. That's cool. And then I think you can also put the skeleton mask, the king mask, like the captain's mask, mm -hmm. and the the king will be like, "Hey, is that you? Why are you so tiny?" Because like he's a giant. Yeah. So it's quite. I, I thought that that was quite hilarious. And I'm yes. like, you know, I'm glad that they included these things in here. So I thought I knew that. I think I knew about that one. I didn't know about the Bremen mask. That's kind of, that's adorable. Adorable, yeah. as they say in the biz. So nice. Uh, so it seems like a lot. It's fun and different. And I like it. But I hate the powder keg. Why would you include something in the, uh, yeah. I don't like that you need this weird consumable just randomly at the end of this weird long quest. Especially, so, you know, uh, it's not like the game takes it away from you every time you play a certain yeah. song. It just, I don't, it just, I don't know, it's silly. I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's part of Zelda. Maybe it's part of like getting to the point where you're like, I need a red potion? Okay, I'll go get a red potion, right? But even this one, like you're running all over the world because the magic bean salesman is only at the Deku Palace. You have to go into the Deku Palace almost to get the magic beans. Yeah, well, unless you want to get highway robbed but in the city. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay, anyways, how about so on to the Stone Tower Temple. So, not a Stone Tower Pilot, but a Stone Tower Temple. Or is it Stone Temple Pilots? Yeah, something like that. So, another great dungeon. So, we start by heading left, finding a key, traveling through the middle of the temple, and unlocking the door to the right. We can explore a little bit deeper in the right path. Change, uh, charge up some mirrors to get past this area. Use Deku Link to fly through another before we have to fight a mini boss. And he's the Garu Master. He gives us light arrows, which then, which allows us to flip the temple upside down. We then travel through the right, find another key, fight a Wizrobe, fight a weird Batman, and we should be close to the boss door. Psh, that's the most consinct, easy way of beating the Stone Tower Temple I've ever heard. Yeah, I was going to say, you completely skip the part where you have to play that stupid, dumb song you learned, the Allergy of Emptiness. Like, how's, how's like 12 times? 12 times good enough for you? How's 12 times? It's it's awful. Like, you have to, and then you have to switch between your masks. Like, it's cool that you're like, oh, hey, each of them can kind of make their own, like, little dummy. And Lynx is really creepy looking. But it's it's just monotonous. Yeah. Like, why do I have to, like, why can't I just, like, press a button and drop one? It's like, no, no, play a song, let that, let that animation scroll, and then you're done. It's like, oh, but like do that every single time, and make sure uh, that you put the right order of the switches. It's like... Oh, I look how you imagine. You have to, you have to put your, you have to put a mask on and transform, and then go do it, and then put a different mask on and transform, and it's just like, not a clean system whatsoever. No. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you, there's not, it's like... It's not like hit three switches right next to each other. Sometimes it's like, no, no, hit that switch. Okay, no, no, hit that switch. No, hit that switch. So if you mess it up, and let's say you accidentally have the wrong person on it. There are... You... Like, they, they do use all three transformation masks in this dungeon, like, equally. So you have to do the Deco guy and fly around the room, or you could be the Goron, right? And you can roll <sighs> underneath... Uh, on the lava and, and like yeah. get a fairy right so and like then there's the swimming of the zoras which gets you some stuff so like they do because they do use them equally i do think it's warranted and they they, they kind of earn that you need to use them all right so like not only are you climbing up to the temple you have to use them all to kind of make yourself a little path and in the dungeon you also need them for both purposes so it's like not as like i understand the frustration but it's not as cheap as it, it sounds yeah, no, it's just, it's more inconvenient. Yeah. And it's just like, I, I just wish I just didn't have to play that song. A hundred percent. And it's the inconvenience that Tyson's talking about here versus the powder keg. The powder keg's just kicking the teeth. You're like, what the fuck? At least, at least you have these. You always have the transformation mask. You can do this regardless where you're at in the games. Yeah. All right, so now we're on to the boss here, which is Twin Molds. So it's two giant snakes. So you start by shooting his eyes on the underbelly of the blue worm. When he dies, you get the giant's mask. You become a giant, uh, which also uses magic. So if you have maybe unlimited magic, that'd be nice. And then you get to play Godzilla and take down the other boss. Yeah, and Link smashes with his fists. It's yeah. awesome. It is... They, they did... Bu like buff up the bosses in this game a little bit so you had to be a little bit more inclusive right uh like yorg had an extra step same with uh the two characters from the last one Odoala and goat uh yeah 
in the, the original, you, you have the mask. I think you either use your sword or your fist and you just kind of run around and punch them. Super easy. So it is nice that they kind of took these uh, bosses and added an extra layer to them, right? So Yeah, and I think that that's totally... That is a fair. That is a nice thing to do in the remake is to give us that extra like. And here's that second form. It's like, oh, I only, I only used to just run around and punch him in the face a bunch. It's kind of nice that you have to like avoid the red guy, shoot the blue one, and then you can actually get the giant's mask. Cause not gonna lie, given the opportunity, I would just be running around in the giant's mask this whole game. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, I mean, is yeah, I guess it is only use it in this area or something like that. Uh, so this, level, I think, is very fun and well-designed uh, in terms of what it is. It does seem kind of patchwork, but, like, it's not terrible. The flipping mechanics is very unique, uh, and it takes full opportunity of the 3D space, right? Again, you can't, can't just create this dungeon in a... 2d game which i think lots of games you you can in the zelda series right so it's kind of nice that they do that uh there was one room where you actually have to flip this medallion and as it flips it up you have to push a block around to get to access to the other one it's cute it's done twice doesn't need to be done more than that however if you're trying to collect the 15 fairies in one shot good luck i had to enter exit flip the dungeon six times to collect them all pain in my ass yeah, it's and then if you forget one, Ugh. which side was it on? Was yeah. it the top when everything was no that and you ha- or did was it you have to flip everything yeah. and then unlock it and then flip it again and then go to it? Uh huh. Yeah. So it it's not that part is not great. Uh, so the overworld cleanup though, you do get the great fairy sword as a reward for collecting the fifteen fairies. Uh, now that the four five four giants are saved, you can go save the world. But first, we need to explore the side quests and dive a little bit more into this game. Uh, that's for next time, though. That's next episode. We're going to be looking specifically, and we're just going to be doing kind of a big mask breakdown. Yeah, and I think we'll probably have a definitive answer on our Battle Royale, or at least okay. right. an answer, I should say. All right, cool. Yes, yeah, so we'll do that. Uh, I think we'll take Majora down, so we'll go to the moon and actually do that a- a- aspect. I mean, I guess to get all the masks, you have to go to the moon, right? So we'll do that, yep. and then we'll... Maybe do side quests and like remake and maybe a randomizer on the fifth part. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Or, or we could do all the side quests beforehand and then let's do just... masks. Let's not do let's not do any side quests. Let's just look at specifically. Let's do a rundown of masks and the moon next episode. Gotcha. And then side quests. So anything that's above and beyond those, we can kind of talk about. Sounds good. All right. Awesome. Nice. Nice. So that wraps up this show. We've got a mysterious area of Termina to look at. And we're out of here. So, Romani's Ranch is weird. Uh, there is a lot of backstory and baggage going on here. So, we have dead parents, evil neighbors who are trying to constantly steal their milk. <coughs> That's kind of strange. A dog racing game and aliens. There are no aliens anywhere in Zelda. Randomly, they show up here. They are based on the Flatwood Monster. Do yourself a favor and Google Flatwood Monster right now. It's kind of creepy. They appear to be interested in the magical properties of the milk. But you end up with more questions and answers after coming face to face with these weird guys. Also, the Gorman brothers have weird ties to the Garos, which are like this weird like warrior race. And they're like dead ghosts and stuff. I don't know. It's just a strange area altogether. A lot of weird stuff happening. Um, never ever is the result like aliens mentioned that i'm aware of in zelda at all ever yeah. um so super cool and i mean it's neat that it's the two lovable sisters that we care about and they seem to have nothing but bad luck like you just feel nothing but horror like you feel so sorry it's so like bad for mm-hmm. these poor girls and it's like like their parents gone now they're getting terrorized by their neighbors who are just jerks that you know aren't going to get their comeuppance in any way, shape, or form throughout this entire story. Mm-hmm. And um, are probably going to keep terrorizing these, these, this, this, these young ladies. And, uh, and, then, and then they have to deal with aliens. And it's like, and if they tell anyone, they're going to be like, you're crazy because that doesn't exist. And well, I'm probably a backwards uh, r- racist because everybody's a racist. I feel, that, so, I feel sorry for my, my Deku shrubs. Yeah, well, I mean, even the, the the older sister, Romani or whatever, she doesn't believe it. It's the little girl that believes in it, right? And she's the one that, like, oh, we have to try and stop them this year. But, like, she's the only one that knows. And you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, next year. You ever think of that? <laughs> like, leaves? Yeah. What are they going to do? 
uh, it's up to that little girl to defend her rant against these yes. not only terrible neighbors but terrible terrible aliens i bet you the bombers the, the she flywood probably... monster looks terrifying so right especially because how big it is i mean they do say that it's like an owl it's probably like a like a snow owl or something and you're like oh okay cool except unless you ever watch the fourth kind i think it's what it's called it's like a documentary uh about these like alien abductions in alaska and there's like aliens that are owls i don't know what's it called the fourth kind yeah fucking creepy so i recommend Check out the Flywood Monster if you want scary aliens and the fourth kind. And you'll be like, what the heck? I'll tell you about this really terrible movie I watched after the podcast. Because, like, honestly, it's so bad. Podcast people you don't want to know. This is a Zelda podcast. We had fun. We talked about what we're doing next week. We're in a month. We know that's it. So we'll end. So I'll say, uh, did we miss anything? Uh, James Bond. Cool. All right. So with that, we'll be back a couple weeks with an actual show. Maybe in person show or, like, a game we played together. It's scary. But we're going to do it and go from there. So, cool. So, bye till then. Bye till then. Bye. Welcome to Podtendo's Legend of Zelda Retrospective. We are going to be primarily looking at Majora's Mask during these next few shows. We are going to be doing a deep dive into thematical elements, gameplay, and the design of this game. Enjoy.